Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have had a super busy week. Um, I have had four appointments this week. Um, two with my doctor, one with a chronic disease management nurse and one with my physio. And the end result is I can return back to work on almost full duties as of tonight, which is really good. However, I am waiting for my work to get back to me to make sure they're happy for me to return. Um, but, you know, we'll just see how we go. Uh, what else have I been doing? So I've seen the physio. The physio has been fantastic for me. She's given me a whole list of exercises I need to do, but the one that she really wants me to work on is my transverse abdominal muscles. So not my abs, but the inner layer muscle is very, very weak. Um, she you know, did an ultrasound and showed me exactly how I should be exercising it, and I could see on the ultrasound machine what it was when I was contracting it and when it was when I wasn't contracting it and I, you know, there's next to no difference whereas on her, when she did it on herself, there's a huge difference and I was like, oh okay, so obviously my muscles are very weak um, so that's something I need to work on so what that muscle group does is it actually helps your spine stay in alignment it helps you to not put too much pressure on your discs which is where I have the issue so I've got all these collapsed discs and bulging discs and because I can't engage those transverse muscles I'm causing more problems to my discs so hopefully I can get these exercises done um, it doesn't take a hell of a lot of effort but because I can't physically see what I'm doing I am really not sure if, it, if it's working or not but we'll see next week when I when I go back to her, whether there's a change or whether there's not. Um, what else have I been up to? I Yeah, I've been given a chronic disease management plan. So that means all of my specialists, so my neurologist, my two cardiologists, my GP, my now physio, they're all in the same loop. So if my, you know, these exercises my physio has given me, all the other doctors are aware of it. It's put onto my plan. They know that I'm doing this to try and help myself. Um, I see my neurologist in a few weeks' time, and our last appointment we were discussing changing up my medication and um, putting me on these monthly injections, uh, which are beta receptor blockers. And basically, it's a way to trick your brain to thinking you have no pain. So that sounds frightening and I didn't want to do it last time because I wanted to continue on the current regime that I was on thinking that you know I've only tried it for a little bit and it hasn't really done much but maybe if I keep going it's going to do something more and it has to a point but not enough to be a good plan for me. So um, when we go back to the neurologist I'm going to discuss with him this other um, route of medication and see how that goes. Um, so with this one he is doing it specifically for my chronic migraine syndrome which is caused by my POTS. Um, but what it will do is it will work on all of my pain. So the medication and the beta blockers, they can't differentiate where your pain comes from. It just tells your brain that you are in pain. So if this medication blocks that signal, theoretically, I shouldn't feel nearly as much pain as I'm in. So that will be really handy. That will help me with my, um, you know, living daily life without too much, too much pain getting into the, the, in the way of what I want to do. Um, it should be able to help me continue to focus on my work. Uh, it should be able to help me to be less grumpy and hopefully a much more nicer person than I already am. So that will be fantastic. Um, what else? I'm currently in a spinal brace. So this is my new best friend. 
uh, super duper uncomfortable to actually physically be in. It's very constrictive. It's got nine bones, like steel bones in it to stop me from moving too much. It's very, very rigid. Uh, but it is helping me with the, the pain in my back. Um, it's stopping me from being able to bend my lower spine in specific ways, which is exactly what I need, even though it is uncomfortable to do, but I need that. And also I have to wear this particular one while I'm working. And then I have another one that I wear um, occasionally while I'm sleeping. So I don't have to wear them 24 hours a day. I don't have to wear them every single day. Um, I currently am simply because it is helping with my pain levels and it is helping with my fatigue levels. But um, I hadn't, I didn't wear my um, my one for nighttime last night because I just wasn't feeling, wasn't feeling it. And you know, I I regret my decision this morning. But <laughs> with EDS, your uh, many sufferers would know your pain can fluctuate. So. One day you can feel absolutely bloody fantastic. You've got, you know, what you would consider next to no pain um, in comparison. Then the next day you could be feeling like absolute rubbish. So, and that's kind of where I'm sitting with my spine right now. If I don't do anything one day, I feel fantastic. Yesterday I did so much walking and running around um, for my, myself and my daughter. She had some appointments as well. So I had to drive her to school, pick her back up, drive her back to school, take her to her appointment, sit in the, um, in the doctor's office for 45 minutes, get her to lie still to get an ECG done, get her to sit still so she could get a blood test done. Like All those things meant I was using my back a lot more than I was two days ago when I was just sitting at home, you know, doing some paperwork on the computer or reading a book or whatever it was that I was doing. So today my pain levels are a lot higher than what they were yesterday. But that's just how life is at, at times. So, you know, we all get pain levels, we all get headaches, we all get frustration. And it's just how we deal with it. So, what else? Uh, my daughter's paediatrician. Um, I mentioned to him that I've been diagnosed with EDS knowing it's a genetic condition. So he has done the checklist for my daughter. Um, she scored six out of the seven. You know, most kids will because they're super duper flexible anyway. Um, but she also has a few other um, clinical indications. So she's got the velvety type um, skin. Her skin's quite transparent. She bruises like a peach. She's at least got 50 bruises on her on a daily basis. Um, but she doesn't have uh, any other signs of things like, um, you know, blood pressure issues. She does get dizzy, but she also suffers from migraines, which is the whole reason why we're seeing a pediatrician anyway. Um, so I'm not sure whether the migraines are caused because she's dizzy, because she's, you know, got low blood pressure. Her blood pressure was fine yesterday at the doctor's office, but she was also super hyped up to be at the doctor's office and not at school. So, you know, it it's too early to say whether or not she has EDS. Um, she does have clinical signs of it, but a lot of kids would have clinical signs of it. Her doctor's going to pass it off to um, some specialists in the area, some rheumatologists and geneticists, and see what they say. Um, and, you know, if they say, yep, we should be, do testing or maybe we should wait till she's 12, then I'll just go with whatever the doctor says. Um, I work alongside him at Aubrey Base, so I'm sure we will, um, you know, we will find out sooner or rather than later with her in, in particular. Um, I do know that there are some people who are trying really hard to get their children um, looked into um, because they do have some signs or they do have a lot of signs of EDS and it's very hard for doctors to um, diagnose it in children simply because they are more flexible they are more 
um, prone to bruising. They are more likely to have softer skin. So all of those indications are also just because they're children. And so if your doctor goes, don't worry about it, they're just a kid, they're just super flexible, they're, they're this, they're that, you know, fair enough. But if your kids had 24 dislocations by the age of four, there might be an indication something is not quite right. Um, my daughter hasn't had any of those sort of issues. She's had a broken collarbone because she fell off a slide and she sprained her ankle at cheerleading. They're the only two major injuries she's ever suffered. So I'm not, you know, I'm about 50% concerned. Um, and it's only a 50% chance that she has it anyway because her father doesn't have it. So I'm not too concerned. Well, sorry, super uncomfortable. Um, what else has been going on? Yeah, not much. I'm excited to go back to work. Um, fingers crossed my boss lets me, please. Um, but you know, it will be good to be going back to what I would consider my normal life. Um, don't know how I'm going to go working four to five days a week, but you know, we, we can try. All we can do is try. Uh, my boss is in the loop, she knows what's going on, she's got a copy of my chronic disease management plan as well, so if I tell her, look, I'm super sorry, I've, you know, screwed up, I can't work my contracted hours, can we drop down? She has to. She can't fire me because she is well aware I have this condition, but she has to also take into consideration everybody else in the ward and what their needs are as well so if if I'm rostered on and I can't do the job what's the point of having me there and I feel the same way as what she would so we're in very um, close-knit discussions about what I need and what I don't need and she's doing her very best to accommodate for me which is fantastic it's great to have such an understanding boss I know a lot of people don't get that so I'm very grateful for that but I am looking for other opportunities that I can continue to do, um, you know, down the track. So my brother-in-law has actually helped me out with a um, another um, route of employment, which I would never have considered, um, which was, uh, you know, helping run a program from a clinical point of view so I don't know too much about it I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the role means but if I get it it means I can work from home it's computer based it's I'm able to you know type an email walk away go for a quick walk get my back working properly again sit back down continue on with my work I can't do that as a nurse I've got to be running on my feet I've got to be lifting you know lifting patients helping patients get in and out of bed doing IV poles those things are bloody fucking heavy too like, let me tell you they're not they're not light they look easy and but they're not they're super awkward to w work with and then we've got you know our TPNs and we've got our PCAs and we've got all these other things too so there's a lot of lifting bending and twisting which is things that I'm not supposed to be doing at all or very minimal depending on how I feel um, but it is what it is and this is the, the life that I chose so I am I am looking for other things but I'm not going to quit my job and lose a stable income it for a possibility at this stage um, but if it does come to fruition then I will most likely take a work from home or a work from an office position rather than what I'm currently doing because physically it's it's too much on my body and my body will give up a lot quicker than what it would if I was working at an office type job but we will see how that all goes um, what else have I been doing this week? I've started reading a really cool book. Probably not that interesting to you, but I, I like it. It's very um, in in depth and yeah, super good. Um, I have also decided 
that the Ellis Danlis Society uh, website only lists two support groups for Australia. One's in Cairns, that's about 17 hours away from me, and one's in Melbourne, which is another f almost four hours from me. So for me to be able to link up with them, it's not not that easy. Um, so I've decided to start my own. So if you want to join, let me know, uh, put it in the comments or, you know, jump on my Facebook group, which is where I'm going to start from. And we will um, eventually, so I'm slowly getting there, eventually um, be able to start an official support group. It will be registered on the Ellis Danlos uh, Society webpage. And that one's going to be for nationwide. So I'm planning to try and have, um, you know, bi-monthly meetings either via Zoom or something, some sort of thing for everyone that's not in my area. I've actually, I know of three people in my um, local area that have EDS, so we can actually meet together in person, which would be fantastic. But I'm trying to get that all up and running. I would love for people to support that cause. I also want to eventually try and do like a, a yearly event, whether it's a, um, a fundraising event or you know a Casino Royale night or something crazy. I, when I get a passion for something like this, I am gun ho about it, non-stop, full ball until I get it done. And it's not necessarily a good thing, but that's just my personality. So I've decided to do this. I've decided to start this um, support group, this official support group. So I'm doing that behind the scenes and you know, on my next video, hopefully it's all up and running. We'll see, because there is a little bit of hoop jumping that I've got to do. And in between that and starting work again, it's going to be a very busy time for me. But I'm super passionate about this. My biggest thing in my nursing career was patient advocacy. Um, I believe for standing up for what I and my patients think is right. And I will, you know, stand up to a doctor if if the patient doesn't agree with it and they're a little bit a bit worried to, to voice their opinion because the doctor knows best. Or, you know, if I think the doctor's done the wrong thing, I will go back and discuss it with them because that for me is important. And now I'm on the back side of that, I'm the patient, and there's no support. Like, my GP's fantastic, love him. He has done a lot of research in this area now because I have EDS. But we get along because we work in the same industry. He knows what I want, I know what he wants. A lot of patients don't have that ability. Um, you know, they don't work in healthcare, so they don't know how to answer questions the way doctors want to hear them. I do. So if my doctor goes, what's your pain level like today? I'll be like, well, sitting down, it's this. Moving around, it's this. Whereas a lot of people be like, oh, I'm not in pain because at that very point in time, they're not. But that's not what the doctor needs to hear. So I can answer the questions that he's asking of me the way he needs to hear the answers. And that's simply because I work in the industry. So being on the patient side of this journey is causing me to see the pitfalls. It's causing me to see all the areas where there needs more action. So that's what I'm going to do. I am very passionate about, you know, starting awareness, starting um, support programs, starting, you know, funding for EDS. There is no funding for us. We have absolutely nothing. The best I can do is get a chronic management plan. The best anyone can do is get a chronic management plan. But that's, you know, we still have to pay for stuff. We don't get funding like NDIS or, you know, you're not covered under disability with Centrelink. God forbid you actually try. So, you know, it, for me, it's a very passionate thing to have is get this sort of stuff 
going for other people, not just for myself, but for everybody else involved because the more people know about it, the more it's going to get what it needs. Um, sorry, I'm getting really, really passionate again. So, let's just calm myself down a little bit. Um, that's what I'm up to. So I am very aware that I might be jumping way too far ahead of myself, but I'm also considerate that I need something to do. I've been sitting around for the last four weeks not doing anything, um, and it has played on my mental health. So now that I've decided, okay, well, there is no support going on, what little support there is isn't good enough for for what I think it should be, so let's get this started. And that's given me a new passion, it's given me a new drive, it's given me more than what I expected, which is um, enthusiasm and, you know, I'm wanting to get this done for myself and my friend Jeanette, for her daughter, and, you know, my other friend Rachel, who has EDS as well, and the other people who are on my um, Facebook group, and for people out there who don't, have anyone that knows anything about this condition but has the condition i'm passionate for you i'm wanting to get this done i want people to know about it so if you want to join or if you want to see me go absolutely batshit crazy about it jump on below like and subscribe and follow along because that's what i've decided to do so i'll be exhausted next week because i'm doing the four night shifts if i finish my four night shifts but after I have my day of rest, I will be getting straight back onto my computer and, you know, emailing everyone that I need to email, organising a website, doing all those sort of things so I can get this support group started so we can band together and support each other as a nation. Until then, keep your eye out for my next video. Um, I'm not sure what day it will be. Hopefully it will be on a Friday again, but we will see. Um, but yeah, until then... Bye, thanks.